David T.C. Davis. Well, thank you uh, very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, may I just first of all come back uh, on a comment earlier on about what Mr Juncker has been saying, because if one could get past the headlines of the, uh, as per usual, biased BBC and the comments that were made by members opposite, the reality is that Mr Juncker has actually said enormous progress has been made in these talks. And I think it might be worth listening to what he actually has to say, say for once instead of all the usual commentators who are doing their best to undermine uh, the excellent work which is being done by my colleagues in government. Now, the Honourable Lady for Darlington made a very interesting speech, and uh, she made a couple of uh, pointed, but very kind remarks about the fact that the Conservative Party had opposed devolution. She said so a couple of times, and of course, she's absolutely correct. We totally oppose devolution uh, in Wales and, and in Scotland too, I believe, but it's, it's to Wales that I will talk about. And I know this, of course, because I was one of the leaders of the anti-Welsh Assembly campaign in 1999. But there's one thing, there's one thing that the Honourable Lady forgot to mention in her long speech, despite making several references to this, and it's rather an important point, because after the referendum in 1999, when a Welsh Assembly was voted for by just half of the uh, electorate, only half of the electorate actually came out to vote, and only just over half of that half decided to vote in favour of a Welsh Assembly. And do you know what the Conservative, or does, would the Honourable lady, lady like to know what the Conservative Party did? We totally accepted the result of that referendum. The very next day we said we didn't like this, it wasn't something that we would have chosen ourselves, but we respect the voice of the people of Wales. We recognise that when people vote in a referendum, even if it's far from overwhelming, that we have to adhere to the, uh, to, to the result. And that is a lesson which I'm afraid the Honourable Lady and many of her colleagues have yet to uh, properly learn. And so, of course I will. Would the gentleman like to explain to the House why he was opposed to Wales having full lawmaking powers in 2011? I'd, I'd be delighted to uh, explain that, but I probably won't be able to today. I mean, it's a, it's a lovely idea, and I, I'd, I'd be more than happy to spend 20 minutes or so on it, but I spent... No, I, 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 I... No. The gentleman would really like to tell the House that at this point. I, for the moment, we will, we will stick to the matter in hand. Yeah, yeah. Let's go Mr. back Davis. to the matter in hand for a minute, because the Honourable Lady was there as well in 1999, and she will surely recall that following that, uh, that vote, that underwhelming vote for devolution, the Conservative Party weren't calling for a second referendum. We weren't threatening to drag the whole thing through the courts and try and get the judges to overrule the will of the people of Wales. We weren't going around pretending that people had changed their minds and that therefore we needed to run the whole thing over again. We didn't say that we were going to, to drag the whole thing out and, and, and do everything possible to undermine it. In actual fact, the then leader of the Conservative Party, uh, Nick Bourne, who is now a member of uh, another place, sat down with members of all parties on the National Assembly Advisory Group and helped to draw up in a constructive way the standing orders, most of which are now in place. And that is the difference, I say to the Honourable Lady, between what the Conservative Party's approach was when we were on the losing side of a referendum and what the Labour Party and the SNP and many others approach is now that they too are on the losing side of a, um, of a referendum. Uh, the reality is that this is going to get called a power grab. I didn't hear uh, the, uh, the phrase today, but it will be. It will be described as a power grab. And I say to my... Very good. Very good. It is a power grab. Of course it's a power grab. A wonderful power grab it is too. We're grabbing those powers back from Brussels and bringing them to London. And not only that, but over the next, over the next few years... Over the next few years... Well, do you know... Do you know the, the SNP can shout all they like. I mean... I'm waiting for one of them to intervene. I, I'm, I'm delighted. Please, sir, please tell me. <laughs> Member for intervening, I have to say initially that perhaps the reason that this campaign against the Welsh Assembly in 1999 failed was that the people of Wales voted in 1997. <laughs> <to have> <laughs> <laughs> so if it turned up two years earlier, it might have gone better. But given that we're talking about where power ultimately resides, can I say to him absolutely clearly, I believe 100% in the ancient doctrine in Scotland that the people are sovereign. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could he tell me where he believes ultimate sovereignty over Scotland resides? Ooh. Well, that is a matter, as the Honourable Gentleman would know, that is a matter for the Scots to decide. And they did decide it. And they've decided that for the time being, that ultimate sovereignty rests within a United Kingdom Parliament in which the Scots are very heavily and well represented, if I may say so. And I totally respect that. I hope the Honourable Gentleman does as well. Just as a, a, a few weeks ago, members of, the, uh, of this particular party were telling us all that we should 
support and uh, recognise the referendum result that took place in Catalonia, where a nation decided that it wanted to break out of a union with Spain. And I don't really, un- you know, I find it very ironic that here we have the SNP saying that we have to recognise the results of referendums where they happen to agree with their policy, but that we should completely ignore them when they don't agree with the policy. Grateful. He really can't compare an unconstitutional referendum organised in Catalonia, which only two million people took part in, to a constitutional referendum in Scotland or in Wales, which was organised according to legal procedures. He really can't do that. I'm not, I'm not making a comparison of the two referendums. Oh, no, no, no. I'm making, I'm making a, I'm making a comparison. I'm making a comparison of the reaction to these two referendums. And on this point, I'm probably actually on the same side as the honourable gentleman opposite. But anyway, to come back to the, well, okay, yes. I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. Um, He does appear to be making light of this issue of the powers coming back. I mean, the Welsh and Scottish governments were promised that the powers coming back from the EU would come to those administrations. And this is a huge number of areas. The Scottish Government reckons that it's 111 returning powers, and the Welsh Government reckons 64. These are huge number of areas. Um, which are now coming back here rather than going to where the devolved competence exists. And while he's at it, does he want to tell us which way Monmouthshire voted in the EU referendum? Well, as the Honourable Gentleman knows, because he, the Honourable Gentleman would certainly know the difference between a local authority area and a parliamentary constituency, so he would know that there's absolutely no way of telling what the Monmouthshire constituency would have done. He'd certainly be well aware of the fact, he'd be well aware of the fact that in the Monmouth local authority area, it was quite close, and indeed there was a very small majority in favour of staying in the European Union. He'd also, be, he'd, also be, he'd also be acutely aware of the fact, and I'm sure his colleague, the Honourable Member for Torvine, would be well aware of the fact that in Torvine, and I represent 10,000 voters in Torvine, 10,000 Labour voting, traditionally working class voters, and I very much res- respect those voters, and they voted overwhelmingly to leave the European Union. And there are some people saying that I shouldn't listen to people like that, but I tell the Honourable Gentleman, those people mean as much to me as anyone living in Monmouth, and I will re- represent uh, their views. And they overwhelmingly voted to leave the European Union. But the reality is, on this, uh, yes, uh, and then uh, I'm grateful to my honourable friend for giving way. Isn't the key point about the referendum not which regions or nations within the United Kingdom family voted one way or another? but that we vote as a, as a United Kingdom on the United Kingdom's membership of the European Union. Absolutely. The, the Honourable Gentleman makes an excellent point. And of course, the whole purpose of what the government are doing here now is to ensure that within the United Kingdom there is a single market. We can't have a situation where different nation states within the United Kingdom are all going off and doing their own thing. If that were to happen, then we'd have exactly the same problem that some members of Parliament on the other side of this House are complaining about and are suggesting it's going to happen when we leave the European Union. So, of course, that's what we're about today. But if, you, if one judges this government by its actions rather than on the words of members opposite, one can see that actually this government and this Conservative Party over and again have given extra powers to uh, the Scottish Parliament, the Northern Irish Assembly and to the Welsh Assembly. Sometimes they've been rather more enthusiastic in doing this uh, than I would choose. But we saw it happen in 2011. We're about to see a huge tranche of extra powers being handed over to the Welsh Assembly in April, I think April the 1st, 2018. So all the time the Conservative Party have shown that they're very, very willing to give these extra powers out to the devolved parliaments. And, and, and I suppose to some extent I, I agree with that. Um, approach. I just sometimes think it's happening a bit too quickly, but it's certainly going to happen again. And so, uh, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to say that I completely and utterly support what the government are doing here today. They're doing, in fact, what all those on the other side of the House are calling for, which is to bring about Brexit in a stable and controlled fashion that allows us to move forward with certainty. It is inevitable that this is going to lead to further powers going to... May May I just finish the point? It is inevitable that this is going to lead to further powers. It may not happen straight away, but it is going to happen. There is not one single power that is coming back to London as a result of these measures. Not one single thing that can be done by the Scottish Parliament or by the Welsh Assembly today, which they won't be able to do once this bill has passed. That's not what it says. The Honourable Member was, for some considerable time, a member of the Welsh Assembly. Is the Honourable Member saying that here today, if he was still in the Welsh Assembly, he wouldn't be arguing 
For the 140 distinct policy areas that have devolved responsibility, many of them with relation to the environment, that he wouldn't be arguing in Wales, in the Welsh Assembly, for those powers to come back to the Welsh Assembly, and, you'd be, and the Honourable Member would be happy for the Westminster Parliament to make those decisions on behalf of Wales? But I, I can say to the uh, Honourable Lady from Bridgend, that's exactly what I'm saying to her. Um, may I just remind her that in 2003 I had an election leaflet that had the headline No More Powers for the Welsh Assembly and I had one of the biggest majorities of anyone in Wales which is uh, something to think about. So yes, that is the answer to that question. Madam Deputy Speaker, I just want to say I think this Government are doing an absolutely superb job. There are going to be all sorts of people once again in the newspapers tomorrow and the commentators all trying to find little reasons to, to, to undermine this process. The reality is, yes, it is quite a complicated process but I absolutely say from the bottom of my heart, I think these ministers are doing a superb job and they're being supported not just by their backbenchers, not just by all those who voted to leave the European Union. They're being supported by a majority of people in Wales who also voted to leave the European Union and are not being respected by the Labour Party, Plaid Cymru or whatever is left of the Liberal Democrats. More power to them. I look forward to joining them in the lobbies tonight. Yeah. Yeah.